make a little bit of noise so you don't startle a bear. And of course, use deterrence, whether that means carrying a firearm or like I have right here, my bear spray. But make sure you know how to use it. So very early on in the investigation, Chief Dahl says that what they know right now is a man has died after allegedly stabbing a woman and then running towards an officer arms. That's right, Maria. So the town hall meeting will begin in just about an hour at six o'clock here at the Lusak Library. The Port of Alaska and right behind me is the NASA cruise ship, the Zondam. Do dress warm, the family says. It's open to all the public. It's about bringing the community together during this very difficult time. Now, it's unclear just how strong the winds were when this did happen. We had different reports. Some say that the winds were just 45 miles per hour. That was according to a home weather system from a neighbor. But in the flat top area, which is just around the ridge up here in the morning, winds were about 75 miles. Now, one of the most popular events is open to the public today. It's from 630 to 930. It's called Chanon, the cultural night of celebration. Now it's five dollars out the door. <laughs> Halloween is almost here and before going door to door to get the very best candy, here are some tips and tricks on how to stay safe. Here on the water and what we're about to check out right now is nature's art and what makes this spot so special. The next step is for the Anchorage Assembly to strike down or approve the project. Reporting from the Upper Hillside, Kaylinda Kindle, Channel 2 News. And I have my gin and tonic here. Right now it's mixed together, but if this new regulation does pass, I can have my tonic and I can have my gin. Several Alaskans told me that today was about ending sexual violence and holding those within the court system responsible, starting with voting to out the judge presiding over a recent sexual assault case. <laughs> These Alaskans outside this courthouse are here to send a message. That sexual violence in Alaska is not acceptable anymore. Rallying together, demanding change within the court system. This campaign is a reaction to a recent sentencing of Justin Schneider, who strangled and sexually assaulted an Alaska Native woman and then walked out of court a free man. Judge Michael Corey presided over that case and protesters want him out. That you didn't find compassion for somebody that was violently assaulted. But in an interview last week, John Skidmore, criminal division chief for the Alaska Department of Law, said that in this case, the two people with the most say in this case did what they could, according to the law. In this case, he was convicted of the highest offense possible, which is assault in the second degree, and the sentencing range was zero to two years. In an effort to change those Thank laws, again, women so, so are stepping forward, sharing their stories. Many of us were reliving our own experiences and our trauma that we didn't get justice for. It's as common as grieving. It happens. But these voices will not be silenced. I'm not covering my eyes out of shame. Where I'm from, that's what the woman did. We covered our eyes. We were uh, known to be too strong to be looked into the eyes. This week, the governor proposed a public safety action plan set in place to toughen current law, making unwanted contact with semen like what happened in the Shiner case, a sex crime. Kaylinda Kendall, Channel 2 News. Over Memorial Weekend, two quilters say they are heartbroken by the discovery of their missing quilts. It's disappointing. It's upsetting. It's violating. It's all of the above, and it's just, it's sad. All that love and work and hard effort is wasted. Mother and daughter duo Terry Cooch and Kim King have been honoring veterans the best way they know how. Quilt of Valor became my mission. By creating these Quilts of Valor for veterans. Traditionally red, white, and blue quilt that is um, presented created, of course, by, by quilters. On Saturday, after quilting class, the pair went to dinner at Red Robin, and when they came back to the car, the quilt was gone. Because we do this because we love to do it, and especially on Memorial Weekend, it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I literally could not believe it when I first realized that that was gone. The one that she's missing right now, um, was hours and hours and hours of work. Cooch says the quilts take about a year to make, and this one was more than halfway done. They're individually pieced and then sewn together, so all these pieces are tiny pieces of fabric put together. 
Cooch says when it's all done, it will look like this picture, but with patriotic colors. With red, white, and blue fabrics. They say they couldn't even start the quilt over again, even if they wanted to. And unfortunately, with this particular quilt, we don't have any more of this fabric, um, and we can't find it anywhere. We've looked online. Cooch says her only sewing machine, fabric, and tools were also taken. But Cooch says the quilt of valor means so much more. That's what started it for us. Cooch says she began quilting as a way to heal after her husband died. For me, a way of, of honoring my husband, who served in Vietnam and, and never received thanks during that time frame. Her daughter made a quilt of valor for her dad, a Vietnam War vet. Cooch says hopefully someone will find the Walt Disney bag or the plastic container the pieces were stored in. And more importantly, find what's inside. It would be a miracle if I could get it back and finish that quilt. Well, there's so many vets we need to thank.